Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a Evil Sworn deck profile. So I'm really excited to do this one because I've got some really interesting tech cards for you guys. This is definitely one of my top uh, 15 favorite deck profiles of all time, which is why it is a part of the top 15. So I really quickly, before we go any farther, want to give a quick shout out to Jake Stewart, who is one of my longtime subscribers who just commented recently and was like, hey, I really want you to do an X Saber deck profile. I do hear you. I will try and do one soon. But he also commented and said that Despots and Evil Swarms are one of his favorite deck profiles of all time. And you know what? It's one of my favorite too. So I want to give you a quick shout out. Thank you for being a subscriber for over five years on the channel. I'm really glad you're here and I'm really glad you're a part of the community. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight on into this and definitely check out this Evil Sworn deck profile. So let's get straight on into this one. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Evil Sworn Kirkion. So Evil Sworn Kirkion is an awesome card. Basically, it has the ability to shorten all that text for you. You banish an Evil Sworn monster from your graveyard to target an Evil Sworn monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then you can get an additional normal summon, which you normal summon the Evil Sworn monster that's in your hand that you just added back to get a rank 4 was the original play that you normally did with Evil Sworns. Then we play three copies of Evil Sworn Caster. Evil Sworn Caster is probably the best Evil Sworn in the whole deck. What you do is, is you when he's normal summoned, um, during the turn he's normal summoned, you can normal summon an additional Evil Sworn. So get your field swarmed with a bunch of Evil Sworn monsters. Then we play two copies of Evil Sworn Thunderbird. Basically, if your opponent activates a card, it runs away. Um, during the player's turn, when a card or effect is activated, uh, you can banish it, and then when it comes back during the next standby phase, return to the field and gains 300 attack, so it goes to 1950. But it basically keeps it on the field so you can get additional like XYZ plays and link plays and stuff like that. Then we play three copies of Evil Sworn Mandragora. Mandragora is if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you get to special summon this card from your hand. So basically it's kind of like Cyber Dragon. So it gives you these like two card combos to get monsters on the field to get into Ophion or Steel Sworn um, Origin or stuff like that. Then I play three copies of Evil Sworn Heliotrope, which is really an awesome card. This card is like really cool. Okay, so the flavor text, if you actually read it, is backwards. And since I'm dyslexic, I can kind of read it. So it says eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. These are the Thorough of, I don't know, Steel Swarm uh, Souls, I don't know, I can't, I have to sit down and actually read that. I can kind of read it, but I am dyslexic, so it kind of jumbles it up a little bit, but it helps to be dyslexic to read it a little bit. So, that's a really, really cool card, and I really love that they actually flipped the flavor text, and Heliotrope is actually known as a Bloodstone which is just a little cool fact. So then we play three copies of Rescue Rabbit. So Rescue Rabbit is the one that we use to special summon Steel Evil Sworn Origin, or Evil Sworn uh, Heliotrope. We special summon two of these off attributing that. Three copies of Ash Blossom is the last three cards that we play in the monster lineup, just to be able to negate some cards that our opponent plays. So we actually play some a lot of traps in this deck and a lot of sp not very many spells at all, but this deck is really, really fun, and I highly recommend it. It's really budget nowadays to play Evil Swarms. It's probably a tier 3 deck, but it's still a lot of fun to play around with. And it's one of my favorite decks, because when I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh!, this was like the first one of the first 10 decks, I think, that I built when I actually started building competitive decks, and I wasn't just building like random beatdown decks. So this deck is super fun, and I highly recommend it. So let's get into the spells, guys. So for the spells, we're going to be playing three copies of Call by the Grave, one copy of Double or Nothing, and one copy of uh, Infestation Pandemic, and then three copies of Allure of Darkness just for draw power because everything is dark in the main deck except for your Rescue Rabbits and your copies of uh, Ash Blossom. So this basically stops hand traps. Double or Nothing is here because you guys know me as Double or Nothing Duelist sometimes because it's such a good card. Um... You need to play this because you can go into Utopia Double and go and OTK your opponent. Infestation Pandemic basically protects all of your Evil Sworn monsters from spells or traps, um, which is super cool. And then Allure of Darkness is our draw power in the deck that you want to be able to draw all your stuff. You don't want to play anything else for draw power because Pot of Indulgence is, you know, going to banish your stuff. I don't like playing... Um, 
Pot of Desires in this deck because I don't play a lot of main deck monsters. Like, I play a lot, but I don't want to banish them, so I don't want to draw into a lot of them either, or banish them because I don't have a way to get them back. So I, I choose to play a Lure of Darkness because I don't mind banishing, like, one copy of something and then getting two cards back to dig into the deck to get something else. So that's it for the spells, guys. We don't play that many spells in the deck at all. I mean, it's like eight spells um, in the main deck. That's it. The rest of it's traps. So for the traps, guys... We're going to be playing three copies of Mirror Force. Now, the reason we're playing all of these Mirror Forces is because of a reason, okay? So, the big reason we play all these Mirror Forces is because of the Link Monster Steel Sworn Origin, okay? So, Steel Sworn Origin's effect, which before we get into the traps so you understand why we're playing these traps, we need to kind of look at this card. Um, while this card is in the extra monster zone, if, it, if monster would be special summoned to an extra monster zone this card points to in the main monster zone, it must be summoned into a zone that this card points to points to so like if you're going to special summon an ophion it has to be summoned under him and if your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck to his zone it has to be special summoned to his zone um which is kind of cool and if a monster is special summoned to his zone this card points to while this card points to a monster neither player can target this card with card effects also it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects and then once per turn when a monster's on the field this is the effect um, when a monster on the field is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can special summon a level 4 or lower Evil Sworn or L Sworn monster from your deck in defense position up to the number of destroyed. So that's why we're playing so many destruction spell and traps. So keep that in mind. That That's a big reason of why we are. So then we play three copies of Torrential Tribute because you can Torrential your opponent. And this card is really, really, really good to be able to just flip on your opponent's turn after they if they destroy your board you're going to flip this and you can make your um evil sworn thunderbird just run away because you can do your first turn of normal summoning evil sworn thunderbird and setting this and then blow the board and banish your thunderbird and then you know you've got all the plays mirror force protects you from your opponent otking you three copies of eradicator epidemic virus this card is so good and i play it in everything um <laughs> because it it's just rage material. <laughs> like, you just flip this, tribute your Ophion, and call spells against the Pendulum deck, and it ends the game. You flip it, and you call traps against Altergeist, and it's game. You flip it against anything that plays spell heavy, and it's over. You play, you flip it against Sky Strikers, and the game's over. You flip it against, like, anything that is trap heavy, and the game's over. This card is so good, and I don't know why more people are sleeping on this card. Like, why are so many people sleeping on Evil or uh, Eradicator or Benemic Virus? This card is so good. Like, you need to play this at three in every dark deck, in my opinion. Um, and then for the last three cards I play is three copies of Solemn Judgment. So I don't know if the play works correctly or not. I think it does, because I think it resolves at the end of the chain. Um, because it can't chain, Steel Sworn Origins can't chain to this. So what I'm imagining happens is you activate this to negate a monster effect, and it destroys it because this card states that it destroys the monster, and then this triggers to special summon one. So I'm imagining that's the way it works. Um, I really wish though that this card did not say level four or lower. I really wish that Steel Sworn Origins didn't say level four or lower because I summoned something like Evil Sworn or Steel Sworn Hercules from the deck. And have that as like a one of big boss when I didn't have Ophion on the field. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So we're playing a lot of traps. We're playing three, six, nine, twelve traps in the main deck. That is a lot of traps. And you can interchange them a little bit if you want to with something else. You play Dark Hole instead of, you know, Torrential. You play other stuff. Um, two copies of Evil Sworn Ophion. I only need two copies of it, so I only play two copies of it. Basically, the big reason that you only play two copies of Ophion is because you only are ever going to summon one, really. Like, you never really go into the second one, ever. Um, and it just makes it so your opponent can't special summon level 5 or higher monsters, and you can't special summon level 5 or higher monsters, so you don't play level 5 or higher, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then basically it has the effect of you can detach a material from it to add a infestation spell or trap, which is our one of infestation pandemic, one copy of evil sworn Bahamut. Evil sworn Bahamut is a good card to play in this deck because once per turn, you can detach material from this card, then target a face up monster your opponent controls, discard an L sworn monster. And if you do, you get to take control of the opponent's monster, which is super good. Evil sworn, uh, Exiton Knight. Exiton Knight, I forgot my words from in there. Exiton Knight just blows board. That's why I played as one of in here. 
Uh, Degasso Emerald, really good card in the deck. Can special summon back your Heliotropes from the graveyard. And then it also lets you shuffle Elsworn monsters back into the deck. And then draw a card, which is good as well. Uh, because you can run out of monsters in the deck. Abyss Dweller, because it's the best rank 4. And then we play the Utopia the Lightning package and Utopia Double package. Which is two copies of Utopia, which you're going to summon off of Utopia Double or Utopia the Lightning. One Utopia Double, which is basically you're going to go Utopia Double, add double or nothing, and then overlay on top of it for Utopia to then attack for 10k. And then one copy of uh, S Prime, which you can make with Utopia the Lightning. So you make Utopia, then go Utopia Lightning, or Utopia Prime, and then overlay Utopia the Lightning. So it's kind of like this. It's kind of like they overlay like this to be able to attack twice with 5,000. Um, so that's that's a thing. To be able to attack with either 10, or you can decide. Do you want to attack twice with 5 or once with 10? You know, to decide if you want to OTK. Um, then cut one copy of Boral Sword, and then three copies of Steel Sworn Origins. You're never really going to summon three. I usually find myself summoning one or two, maybe. So if you want to change one copy out, definitely do. But I really wanted to play three copies of it. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a really fun deck. You don't really have to play the Boral Sword. You could change it out for Boral Load if you wanted to go for more of a budget you know, play. You definitely could go for something else, maybe Boral Load, because they did get reprinted as a common to make this a little bit more budget. But this is definitely a budget-friendly deck. Um, you could probably build this deck for maybe 40 bucks besides the Boral Sword. Um, and maybe the Digusto Emerald. You could probably drop this and drop, you know, I would definitely play the Utopia package though. But anyways guys, this is Darkham Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely comment down below and tell me what you think of this deck profile. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around guys.